This is a video response to Moonlit Opal. She posted a very interesting video about um, being an empath, um, having doctors tell her that she's depressed and uh, in combination with all that also wondering uh, what uh, people that feel there are, they are an empath, what their sign is, because she's interested to see how people with different signs cope with being an empath in a different way. And uh, I wrote you, and I wrote to you in a comment that I absolutely had to make a video response, and I have about an hour to myself right now, and I hope I can shoot this in one go so I can actually. Um, put it up tonight, otherwise it's going to take at least another week. Um, I recognized everything you, you talked about, but like I said in the comment, I recognize it from the past. And um, you asked a couple of questions, like what is it like for you to be an empath? What's your sign? Um, do you think you are depressed or are you feeling depressed because everybody else around you is depressed? And you asked, do you think you would feel better if you would surround yourself with better people? I will come to those questions um, during the video. First off, I want to start off with the whole depression thing. Um, it was about 10 years for me, 10 years ago, and I was diagnosed with major depression disorder. And when I say major, I mean major. I was suicidal, I was psychotic, and I was almost uh, committed to a hospital. Um, I was also very, uh, very much an empath. Or I don't know how you say that. I say was because I have been an empath all my life, but somehow when I started getting cured from the depression that had its eruption about 10 years ago, I started to get control uh, over the being an empath or not. And um, what I wanted to say in response to your video when it comes to that combination of being depressed and being an empath, I think that being depressed actually enhances being an empath. empath. Um, first of all, I think you can be depressed even though you have a wonderful life, mainly because um, yes, depression, depression usually gets triggered by main events in your life, which uh, usually cause stress. It doesn't have to be anything sad, it can be happy stress as well. It's just stress can trigger it. But once it's been triggered, it's... Um, when you're talking about clinical depression, it's usually a state which your body or mainly your brain will stay in because it is a physical disorder. And yes, you can then uh, influence the physical disor disorder by both therapy, cognitive therapy for, for example, and medication. But you can absolutely be depressed even though you have a wonderful life. So that aside, <laughs> also when you're depressed, um, one of the main sensations I felt was that being awake, just being, uh, gave way too many uh, s uh, stimuli. So anything that came into my senses, into my eyes, ears, smell, uh, feeling vibrations in the, in the house because someone else is playing very loud music or whatnot. Any sensation that physically came in was too much. So I was never able to shut anything out. And I think that that situation actually... Um, oh, I don't know the English word for this. 
enhances, facilitates, facilitates, that's the word, facilitates empathic situations. Since you're not able to close yourself off to regular senses, I think your senses to non-regular uh, input are constantly open as well, or wider open than they would be if someone would be completely healthy. At least that's my experience, that's how it felt for me. As you can hear, I'm speaking in past tense, and that's because I got completely cured. Of course, it's something that you will always carry with you, the, the imbalance in your brain. It, it will always stay fragile, but um, I am cured. I'm not depressed, as we speak. And when I started to gain back control of my thought process, so whatever was happening inside my head, I started to gain control of it again as I started getting better. And uh, with that, I also started to gain control again over the sel selectiveness of which senses I would let in and which not. And then I'm talking again about the norm normal, mundane, uh, physical senses. And with that, automatically, um, the feeling of always continuously being influenced by what by what other people were feeling also disappeared. It didn't disappear completely, but it diminished, diminished, diminished a lot. And um, I'm rambling a lot, Jesus. Jesus? <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, I better get you an answer to your questions before I ramble for 10 minutes and then it's it's all gone. Uh, so what's it like being an empath? For me, right now, it's nice because I can shut it off and, when I want to um, and I can turn it on when I want to. Um, that doesn't always count. Of course, when it's someone that I live with, like my fiance or my daughter, if their emotion is very, very strong, of course I can't shut it off. But I think nobody can. Even non-empaths can shut that off. But other than that, I can turn it on and off, uh, usually when I want. Uh, what's my sign? I'm a Virgo. You wouldn't tell by the chaoticness of this video. <laughs> But yes, I'm a, I'm a Virgo, and I'm usually a very chaotic Virgo. <laughs> um, then the question was, are you depressed because other people around you are depressed? And would you feel better if you surround, you with better, if you surround yourself with better people? I think that's a question that you shouldn't keep yourself busy with. Because there are too many unhappy people in the world right now. So it's too hard to even actively try to surround yourself with better people or people that are always happy. Or I think the way you feel, whether that's influenced by being an empath or not, the way you feel needs to be generated by what's inside yourself. And it's impossible to surround yourself with people that, uh, or with mostly people that are happy, unfortunately, in this world. And I think that's because, like coming back to the stress factor, I think that's because this world right now is too fast and it's demanding too much of everybody, which is generating too much stress, which is then giving depression to many, many people unfortunately. So those are the questions. I'm at nine and a half minutes. Oh my god. I'm gonna have a look at what I've recorded so far and maybe I'll leave it like this and upload it or I'll do some cutting and then I'll add something else to make it more structured. I don't know. We'll see how it ends up. But um, there you go. Uh, love your videos. I hope you keep making them and uh, see you around. Bye bye.